Hello, and my name is Nicholas Santillo, and welcome to the last video that we have for our curriculum in DHIS2. You've made it this far, so congratulations. Uh, in this video, we're going to just be looking at kind of moving forward, API, apps, and beyond. These are all heading out into the, the wild and uh, crazy world outside of the curriculum and uh, in a few different ways. API and apps, we're looking at the more complex ways of using DHIS2, all of which really require some coding knowledge. Uh, so this is very much outside of my expertise, specifically um, kind of outside the what we've set up here with the curriculum. So more of a conceptual overview of how to think about using DHIS2 if you want to hire some people or have some coders in your own uh, company. Um, and beyond, how are you going to be working with DHIS2 uh, on your own now that you're done this curriculum? You're going to have to connect with the community. It's a great community, and we're going to talk a little bit about how to connect to them. So that's what this video is about, and hope you enjoy. Here again is our overview of the DHIS2 curriculum at Logical Outcomes, which we've been developing. And of course, right now, we are at the bottom, the last unit, API, Apps, and Beyond. As we're getting into more specific and detailed uh, things, there are less and less specific chapters to read through. So the DHIS2 Implementation Guide, Chapter 18, DHIS as a Platform, has some good stuff about uh, web portals and API, as well as specifically Chapter 19.4.4 uh, in the User Manual, Designing HTML-Based Standard Reports. But uh, the best thing to do would be to actually uh, open uh, both of those uh, the implementation guide and the user manual as a single HTML page and just search for API uh, or Web API um, as each chapter has a little piece um, if it is connected uh, in terms of how much you want to get into uh, the coding uh, knowledge. So first things first, we're going to start with API and uh, we're not going to get into a lot of detail with API because we are getting into more coding in this final unit, which is not something that uh, we are necessarily, uh, myself specifically, um, qualified to teach. But I can tell you that API stands for Application Program Interface, um, and it allows a program or application to access um, data. And the data can be pushing data out or pulling data in. So this infographic is a good example of, of how an API might work with DHIS2. DHIS2, of course, being the database here. And you would access information either from your smartphone or your, uh, your program um, on your PC. Uh, you would send a request, and then it would send it back to that program. So there are many different ways. Anyone can write an API, uh, but it takes uh, some coding skill and quite a bit of time to just make sure you have everything working exactly the way you want to. That's, um, APIs are not very flexible outside of coding, uh, but they have endless potential if you know exactly what you want. So a good example of what you can use DHIS2 for. Uh, what we're looking at here is a screenshot of a default DHIS2 web portal. You can click on the picture to access that link right now. And that's an example of the data being pulled out of DHIS2 into the program that is your uh, web browser, in this case, uh, Google Chrome, as you can see. But as we said, the information can be going both directions. So survey tools such as ComCare, ODK, um, they can collect the information for you and then put it into DHIS2's database, uh, the data warehouse. So you don't necessarily have to use the data collection um, that DHIS2 has built in. You can use the existing um, survey tools that you're using at the moment and you use your API to connect that. As well, uh, Microsoft Excel, LO, uh, Logical Outcomes is currently working on this. Uh, so we don't have um, an example at the moment at the time of recording this, but we will have one available soon, and that'll be uh, open source as soon as uh, we're finished and we've taken out the um, specifics of the client. Uh, that will be connecting Microsoft Excel uh, config sheets to be uploading in very, very more specific ways, uh, more specifically than DHIS2 has built in. 
And this can go on and on and on. Any type of program that you can think of that you would want to connect to either pull information out of the database, that is DHIS2, or to put information into the database, uh, you can build an API for that. It just takes a bit of coding. Uh, one last thing to mention is that uh, every time you build an API for a program, as I said before, it's very specific and it's not very flexible, but as soon as you have one, uh, it takes much less effort to uh, customize that API into your own needs, which means uh, the open source model that we're working with at Logical Outcomes and the community means that the more APIs are developed, the faster it'll be to connect more and more programs and customize these APIs to your own specific needs. It's only that first one that takes that huge amount of effort. Now getting into DHIS2 apps. So there are two different types of apps, mainly. Uh, we're looking at web apps. These are the apps that will be working through your web browser uh, access to DHIS2, and we have Android apps, uh, now because DHIS2 does not have iPhone apps. Now, uh, Android apps, we'll be looking at, uh, at the mobile video, so if you want to learn more about that, you can go into the mobile video. We're going to be mostly talking about, right now, the web apps, and you can get to those from the DHIS2 app store. You can click the link uh, just um, click the picture right now and it'll take you there and what you can see is that the apps uh, allow for a little bit more customization within your browser's uh, view or within the DHIS2 um, browser access and Sarah Godin will be leading us through a walkthrough of how to install web apps in the next slide but we're not going to be spending a huge amount of time on this because it is getting a little bit beyond the um, realm of our curriculum. So I'll leave Sarah to kind of give you an overview of how this works, and then we'll be moving on. DHIS2 web apps can be downloaded from the App Store, Development App Store. You'll notice we've got web apps and Android apps. The Android will be covered in another unit. So these are the official web apps, but as Nicholas noted, anyone can create an app, anyone who can code, that is, um, for a number of uh, purposes. So this is a, a tabular tracker capture app. We've got ones for allowing custom JavaScript. There's a few visualizer apps that provide a more easy to use interface for beginners but the possibilities are really endless, so it's quite easy to get your app. Simply download the zip file, and then when you visit your DHIS2 instance, you'll want to go to the App Management app. Uh, simply choose your file, and it will install. So your list of applications will be available here, and simply click to open and you can get using your web apps. So finally, DHIS2 and beyond. At this point, you want to connect with the community because as we move forward, you might be hiring experts um, to help work with further implementation, but very likely you'll be coming across uh, little questions and things where you want to be able to access the community and the resources of this open source community directly, um, either from your own um, team or your own experts within your company. And one of the best ways to do this is through Launchpad. The launchpad.net slash DHIS2 is where you can create a user account, you can subscribe to mailing lists which will give updates on new versions, and you can also ask specific questions to the Launchpad community where the open source community will be able to answer those questions. It's like a message board. Um, and this is a really great place to get high level technical support without having to pay for um, a specialist to come in and, and give you uh, support and that you have to, um, to schedule things and, and deal with that. So uh, this is where most of the people in the community are on a launch pad, at least someone from uh, the company or from a government or from every instance is represented in Launchpad. Um, and a lot of experts also are on Launchpad. So this is a great place to move forward, to stay involved with the community, to offer your own answers to people who are just getting involved, and uh, to get high level uh, resources in terms of answers, in terms of maybe even open source APIs if they're available um, from the Launchpad community. So 
As you move forward, you're now done our academy, your uh, equivalency level one and two based on the DHIS2 Academy workshops. Uh, we hope that this was helpful and as you move forward, you can always get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or of course, see us in the launch pad. Uh, and I hope that you'll be answering our questions very shortly. Thanks so much. So that's the whole kit and caboodle. You've now finished the curriculum. This was the last thing that we had in the docket for you, and I hope that you've learned quite a lot about how to use DHIS2 and how to further your own uh, instance, as well as uh, how to connect to the community and look forward to um, moving in your own direction, answering your own questions, uh, teaching your own people. You can use, of course, all of this material uh, for your own uses. You can also customize it if you'd like by downloading the Office Mix links as PowerPoint presentations so that you can customize these uh, videos for your own internal use any way you want. It's all open source. Thanks so much for going through the curriculum with us and uh, from Logical Outcomes, my name again is Nicholas Santillo, and from the whole Logical Outcomes team, uh, we'd like to thank you again, and hopefully we'll be working with you in the future, uh, and we'll be learning with you and from you as we go forward.